Oh, good afternoon, everyone. So, uh, as discussed in the previous class, uh, I will be showing my FSO setup. Uh, although we'll, in this session, we have a problem, problem discussion session. Uh, first, we'll, I will show you my FSO setup that I have made in my laboratory. Uh, once after that, uh, we will have a problem discussion session. So, uh, is it visible, uh, Ramandeep and uh, Lavanya? Yes, yes. So, uh, this is basically the PER tester. This generate a uh, FSO signal of 1550 nanometer or laser signal of 1550 nanometer. After that, we have a ADFA. Uh, this is used to amplify the signal. This is optical attenuator. This optical attenuator attenuates the signals so that we can study uh, the transmitted signal at different level of power. If you change the power, then how the signal going to behave? For that, we keep keep here as an attenuator. Now, uh, as we switch on the laser, the light would be emitted from this laser. Now, this emitted light will go to the ADFA from ADFA to optical attenuator from optical attenuator here uh, fi through fiber this light will go to this position and these lenses are here to collimate this FSO signal see uh, this is 1550 nanometer so you will not be able to see this light using a naked eye you need a detector card so uh, this is the detector card if I place it uh, here, see, uh, are you able to see a red spot? Yes. So, this is the light. Uh, this is the signal or light that is transmitted using the... Uh, let me switch off the tube light. It will help you to see in better way. Hmm. Uh, the red light is visible, I think. A red spot. This you see it from here. Uh, don't know. Yeah. So this is the light. This is transmitted to other end of the lab. From here, we reflect that signal using this mirror so, so as to increase the link length. And after reflecting the signal, this again, this mirror is again reflecting the signal to the other uh, part of the table. Then the signal is coming back to this lens. And through this lens, this is converged into the optical fiber. Here the optical fiber is kept, it is bare optical fiber. So from this optical fiber to this signal is given to directly to the BER tester. This BER tester determine the, uh, what is the amount of uh, error that is causing in this signal. See this is giving the transmitted signal, receive signal. We want to see the errors to start this. And this is the amount of errors that is happening in the in the transmission and receiving of the signals. So this is the kind of experiment that I am doing here in my lab at IIT Jodhpur. Uh, if anyone have any questions, then one can ask me. See, uh, one more thing we have here is, here we keep a heaters uh, to generate the turbulence. Because this heater create a temperature difference and due to this temperature difference, there is a, a turbulence kind of phenomena that is generated in this channel, uh, which is between these mirrors and the, and the transmitter and the receivers. If you switch on the heat. Uh, Uh, 
don't know it is not clearly visible uh, but if you see clearly uh, there is a beam wandering phenomena you can see here the beam is moving are you able to see this uh, movement of the beam yes so this is due to the turbulence this is called beam wandering that uh, that have been taught to you by sir initially when i put off the heater you have seen that uh, this uh, beam was stable now when i switch on the heater the beam is moving this is the phenomena of beam wandering also in our lab we have a fogger fogger machine uh, to generate the fog and this is the chamber where we generate the fog and uh, other phenomena fog and turbulence and using this we transmit it and this using this lens we converge it and converge it into fiber and through fiber we take it back to the ber tester and we detect uh, the what is the amount of ber throughput and other uh, other performance parameters using this uh, testers so this is it regarding my experiment setup uh, do anyone have any doubts regarding this Uh, do anyone want to ask anything on this? Okay, uh, let's move to the problem session part. So this is the first problem, you try to answer this question and then I will tell you the answer. It will be C. C increase the free space loss in FSO link with increase with increase and with increase in distance. Yeah, C is correct. Anyone else? C is the correct answer. The free space optics channel is highly affected by. Fog. Uh, why fog and why not rain? Do anyone have an answer of this? Why fog? Why not rain? See, it's because uh, the size of the particles. If if in in place of FSO, if I say that RF, if in place of FSO I made it as an RF, then what will be the answer?
for rf channel is highly affected by then i think it should be rain yeah correct for rf it is rain and for fso it is fog so why it is so why for rf it is rain and for fog it is uh, for uh, fso it is fog because the uh, uh, frequency uh, at the wavelength of uh, this uh, free space optics matches with the size particle yeah. in case of fog in case of fog and for rf it matches with the size particle mm -hmm. that of rain mm -hmm. so that's why rf affects more uh, here the answer will be fog rf is more affected by rain and fso is more affected by fog uh this is a numerical type question uh, you need to calculate it third calculate the diameter of the spot of the optical beam at a optical link distance of 2 km when the wavelength is 15 15 nanometer and the diameter of the transmitter is 3 cm do anyone have any idea how to solve this question I think uh, dr is equal to lambda r by dt no uh, this is not the correct uh, way anyone else so uh, here it is saying that from aperture of 3 cm a beam is uh, transmitted at a distance of 2 km so uh, what will be the diameter of this spot here what will be the spot so as you know that when a beam travels in free space there is a phenomena called dispersion or beam sorry beam divergence so beam divergence so can anyone say what is the angle by which the beam diverges Uh, we read in the class the divergence beam diverges at an angle of 1.22 lambda by dt. dt. So uh, through this angle, you can calculate the uh, what is the angle through which this beam is diverging. This theta d. So once you calculate this angle by which the beam is diverging. then uh, you may be able to calculate the diameter of this spot so you put the value of lambda and dt in this theta d and you uh, calculate it if anyone get the answer uh, just tell me here One point two two into lambda is fifteen fifty nanometer. Fifteen fifty nanometer means ten to the power minus nine by dt. Dt is three centimeter. Three into ten to the power minus two. You put the value.
So I will get 6.30 into 10 to the power of minus 5. Okay. Uh, 63 micro radians. Okay. Uh, see, I don't have the answer. I have the final answer. So uh, once you get this uh, theta divergence, uh, can you tell me what is the way to calculate the beam diameter? At the receiver? Just simple technometry. Just use simple technometry. You will be you will be getting the answer. You have this. You know this. Uh, you need to calculate this one. You know this is two kilometer. You know you know, you know the angle theta. So it's like single, simple technometry. Tan theta equal to. Can I say then it is equal to let's make, let's say this is the radius of the beam. So let's say this is R, this is radius of the beam by distance two kilometer. Say let this L. So the radius of the beam will be L into ten theta, and for small angle. Can you write L into theta? So just multiply it by 2 kilometer. You will get the radius. And so once you get the radius, double it, you will get the diameter. Because you need to calculate the diameter. Just make the double of the radius. So D will be 2L into theta. So try it out, you will get the answer. Till then, let me solve this. What is theta d? Can I even say theta d was six point? Uh, Ramandeep, theta d was six uh, point. Six, sixty-three micro radian. Sixty-three into ten to the power minus six. Yeah. Okay. So answer will be c. Point two five meter. Point two five meter. Yeah, c is the correct answer only. But where do we use the formula that uh, dr is equal to lambda bar, lambda r by dt? dr is also the same thing, na? Uh, we are calculating dr only, yeah? Yeah, I don't remember where we have used this formula. dr is equal to uh, lambda by dt. No, no, see. Uh, lambda r by dt. No, as I don't remember this formula. Uh, I remember this formula as in theta divergence is equal to uh, 1.22 lambda by d t or sometimes it is also calculated as approximately this is also tell, uh, can be written as lambda by dt mm. but uh, nowhere it is used like this somewhere for approximation 1.22 is uh, omitted and it is written like directly as uh, divergence angle is equal to lambda by dt So, uh, okay, the answer is C only. I hope you have got the answer. Uh, so, I want to ask one more question. If you want to uh, decrease the divergence, if you want to decrease the divergence, you know, so that uh, if, if divergence is less, then you will get a smaller diameter of the uh, beam at the receiver. So, you want to decrease the divergence. So, to decrease the divergence, the beam divergence, so to decrease the beam divergence, what you need to do? Uh, so uh, to decrease the beam divergence, 
so as to uh, decrease the so as to decrease the diameter of the beam at the receiver so to decrease the wavelength first decrease the wavelength if i say i need to increase the transmitter aperture or decrease the transmitter aperture that to decrease the transmitter aperture. yeah intuitively it is we think that if transmitter aperture is big then we will be getting a big uh, diameter at the receiver but uh, from formula you can see here that if the aperture of the transmitter is large then the divergence will be small so just get the answer as here like this hope i am clear next question uh, the refractive index structure parameter cn square c cn square is a parameter which is used to calculate the uh, turbulence strength i hope you all know what is turbulence and in, in atmosphere how the turbulence is created uh, can in short anyone tell me what is turbulence and how turbulence is created in atmosphere see uh, just give me a brief about turbulence uh, when sun rays falls on earth the temperature near the earth surface is high when sun rays falls on the earth the temperature near the earth surface is high and as you move up the temperature decreases due to the difference of this temperature there is a change in refractive index as you move along the height of the along this arrow so as you move up the refractive index changes because of the temperature because of the temperature uh, the there is a change in refractive index and not only temperature the pressures the pressure temperature and wind velocity all this change the refractive index and now due to this change in refractive index the beam which was traveling in a straight line now this uh, there is a small packets of air like small big different sizes of packets of air which have a different refractive index this small packets are called eddies so this ed different there are different sizes of eddies and different sizes of eddies has, have different refractive index due to the wind velocity or pressure or temperature this keep on changing their size and keep on move, moving uh, in random in random positions and random way so and due to this there is a, a phenomena called beam wandering or uh, beam scantilation or beam spreading so uh, these are the phenomena that are happening in the atmosphere due to this due to the presence of this eddies of different refractive index so when the ray travels this move up and down or there may be a beam spreading a uh, beam spreading is basically the size of the beam increases spreads uh, beam sc scantilation is the strength of the signal keep on changing uh, if here the strength will be something different here the strength will be something different so the strength of the beam keep on changing due to this different sizes of eddies which which the ray is encountering in his path 
and this beam scantilization is generally given by normalized uh, normalized variance of refractive index so this is the beam scantilization when the size of the particles or these eddies which the laser beam is encountering is nearly equal to the wavelength of the uh, the particle size and wavelength if they are nearly equal then there will be beam scantilization if the particle size is bigger than the wavelength then there will be beam wandering and if the particle size is smaller uh, than the wavelength size then there will be a phenomena called beam spreading so these are the three phenomena that keeps on happening in the atmosphere due to the uh, and this due to the change in wind velocity temperature and the pressure and this uh, phenomena is called turbulence that is uh, that that a beam laser beam encounter in real atmosphere so uh, i hope you can uh, now tell me the answer out of this wind velocity temperature pressure and beam divergence angle so which will be the answer pressure no no yaar uh, wind velocity temperature and the pressure uh, these are the three things that are affecting the uh, okay. cn okay. refractive index which uh, the question is which is not affecting not a function of cn square mm -hmm. the yeah, beam divergence angle beam divergence yeah sure beam divergence angle i hope you have got the point let's move to the next question uh, which of the flowing atmospheric turbulence effect is observed if the size of the turbulent eddy is larger than the transmitted beam size beam wander there may be a multiple correct answer so uh, beam is spreading see the size of the uh, particle size of the turbulent eddy is larger uh, than the transmitted beam size see as i have explained previously there are three phenomena beam wandering beam scantilization and beam spreading beam spreading happens when the size of the particle is less than the turbulent eddy this causes beam spreading and if the size is nearly equal to the turbulent eddy then you will have beam scantilization and if size is greater then the turbulent eddy then you will have beam wonder where you can see a uh, fluctuations of beam or the the centroid of the beam will keep on displacing its positions as we have seen in the starting of the class in a random way in a random fashion in a random direction so when the beam is moving then suppose the beam is going like this it is moving up and down and we have a receiver here so what will happen 
will the light be able to point properly at the receiver? No. No. So, oh, what kind of error it may have other, other than beam wandering? Pointing error displacement. Pointing error displacement. So, uh, so it it will be have it will be having two answers. One will be pointing error displacement, and second will be beam wandering. So, uh, what is pointing error displacement? How it is quantified? Uh, generally, what you say if the receiver is this one, let's make it here. If suppose the receiver is like this, and now the beam suppose the beam is like this. Instead of pointing here, the beam is pointing here. So the measurement of pointing errors is given by you draw a line from the center of the beam to the center of the receivers, from center of the beam to center of the receiver. This is like x, say this is y. And this is the R vector from uh, center of the beam to uh, the center of the receiver. So this R will keep on changing because the beam is changing. The beam is changing its position. You know, the beam is changing its position. So this R will be keep on changing. And this as this R is changing, this R changes by a distribution, say, relay distribution. Experimentally, this is proven that this R changes with a relay distribution. And the angle between this R vector and, uh, say, this S axis is called theta g uh, this is jitter angle theta g this is the jitter angle so the lp uh, or pointing loss the loss due to the pointing is generally expressed by exponential of So this is how we generally uh, quantify the pointing loss or pointing errors. So this pointing error is due to the turbulence and due to the turbulence, uh, this pointing error may due to the turbulence, but there are other factors which may also cause pointing error, like the vibration of the buildings. Uh, there is always a vibration of the buildings. So the vibration of the building may also cause pointing error. Or due to the earthquake or some other phenomena, there may be a pointing error always. So this is all about the pointing errors and uh, the phenomena like beam wandering and all. So, if you want to understand what is the atmospheric turbulence, which I have told due to the uh, temperature difference, which is created in the earth, between the earth's surf surface and as you move towards the uh, upwards from the uh, earth's surface, if the input wave is straight, there will be a fluctuation in the input wave, there will be change in intensity. And if the particle size is small or the eddy size is small, then there will be a phenomena called beam spreading and beam in, beam in scantillations, which will cause the change fluctuation in the power, as you can see here. And if uh, the particle size is big, then there will be a beam wandering, as you can see here. And this will fluctuate the power by a large, large amount if the receiver is uh, if it focus away from the receiver. And uh, 
as I was showing you the phenomenon of beam wandering, that again you can see here in a short video. So this is beam without the turbulence, and with turbulence the beam wanders, as you can see here. So this were the question that I was discussing. Uh, uh, do anyone have any doubt? Then we can discuss more about it. Uh, Ramandeep, do you have any doubt? No, no, not right now. Aryan Lavanya? No, sir. Okay. See, uh, one more thing I was willing to discuss was. See, if you see the PDF of the turbulence, uh, how the turbulence is uh, behaving uh, to a laser beam. So uh, there are many PDF that has given for weak turbulence, it behaves some different way for uh, moderate to strong turbulence. behave some different way uh, for weak turbulence generally it follow a log normal distribution for moderate to strong turbulence follow gamma gamma kind of distribution gamma gamma kind of distribution There are many other uh, distribution that have been given for uh, like negative exponential and uh, for the more uh, distributions are given for the turbulence phenomena. But widely accepted are log normals and for weak turbulence there is log normal and for moderate to strong turbulence gamma gamma are the uh, ones that are widely accepted. see for the irradiance like long normal behave like this so okay uh, this is it from my side uh, if anyone have any doubt can ask me uh, so i am ending my class here i hope this question will help you to solve the assi your assignments questions you know?